So the apples didn't go bad all that time in those, that fridge. I've never seen that before. They were organic, too. Usually they go bad fast. I don't know why they did not go bad. Maybe because they were by themselves, and other times they've gone bad because they were next to other stuff in the fridge. I don't know, in the bottom drawer, but they didn't go bad. So I took two of them, mixed with water. Um, it didn't taste sweet enough. I'm trying to make it into 32 ounces. Remember, I didn't have enough of the Lakewood um, cold pressed organic apple juice. I forgot. I was thinking 64 ounces was a gallon, but it's 128 ounces a gallon. So I used three yesterday instead of four. My first day, my juice fast. This is the second day. Um, I just made my soup again. It's just what I had in there: spinach. That zucchini from the freezer, there's still more in there somewhere. Um, I had some tomatoes in the freezer. Um, oh, and all the, the six onions. So it's not going to be the most potent broth, but um, it's not to have as main meals or anything. It's just to eat in between or whatever and it'll have good spices in it black pepper turmeric ginger it has garlic in it this wasn't sweet enough I added a tiny bit of stevia some red pepper liquid um, cayenne and a little bit of lemon juice from a bottle no it's okay it'll do um, anyway Something else, you who are following this very carefully, please don't ever, ever forget that it was only pure chance. And a lawyer would have a field day with this too. I'm I've been telling you all these things a lawyer would have a field day with, okay? And just want you to know. And if Auntie's watching this, she should know I can get a free attorney. I have no money whatsoever. He told me that. He's, he's like, you can get a free, you, you have no money, you have a right to fight this. This is your mother, this is your rightful inheritance, this is everything she's ever wanted for you. Above and beyond, it's my fucking mother. You know, it's like the, the person. That, anyway, pure chance that Auntie's apartment downstairs apartment was vacant so had her downstairs apartment not been vacant her little make my sister well again would have been a non-topic a non-issue wouldn't it have of course it would have okay it would have it would have been a non-issue had her downstairs apartment not been vacant you understand And then she would have done what a good person would do and tried to get to the bottom of what was... This is providing that she wasn't the one who told my mom to revoke the release. If my mom's being stubborn or being whatever or revoking the release, Auntie would have got to the bottom of it and talked to them and smoothed it all out, okay? Because it's ridiculous. I'm the healthcare proxy. I'm the emergency contact. I'm the daughter. I'm her biggest... Uh, her advocate. Auntie's not even involved anymore, okay? Just barely, barely... You know? And then what would have happened? I don't know. Fanti's apartment wasn't vacant. What? The, another, you know, just like that movie, the, the you know, Groundhog Day, whatever. My, my mom would have been released, discharged too soon. I would have, you know, just... Uh, I don't know what would have happened. I'm just saying what did happen is not right, okay? It's not right. Based on everything that I was doing to help and save my mom and this, that, whatever, help her, save her against herself, save her from herself, et cetera, et cetera, for my aunt to just be able to step in and do this and take everything from me and, and, and you know, relegate me to a point where I'm not allowed to even know what's happening with my own mother. I mean, that is just wrong okay 
And again, had Auntie Downs' apartment not been vacant, her whole make my sister well again would have been a non-issue. You understand? So that, a lawyer would have a field day with that as well. Again, I speak the truth. Okay? Auntie normally is renting out her downstairs apartment. And the first thing he said, my friend down there, the one who's out of the state for this till the summer, was, oh yeah, if she really wanted to make her, he was sarcastic, if she really wanted to make, he, he said, he's experienced shit like this, he knows the whole ropes, he knows how people twist it, he saw it through it instantly, he's like, if she really wanted to make her sister well again, then she wouldn't be so worried about getting rent from her sister, see? Am I right or wrong? Okay. And then we go back to the same thing. She doesn't want my mom to be able to give me a goddamn penny. I know what my mom would have wanted for me had my mom not been, you know, in this gradual, you know, getting work, cognitive decline or whatnot. And, you know, because to her, well, it's only fair. You Why? None of this is fair to me. It's only fair you pay the utilities. Why? Why? You think I'm going to stay here forever if you're paying the utilities? You think if you didn't, some benefactor didn't hand me $10,000, actually pay me $5,000 right now, I wouldn't be out of here? My next check's 1000 You figure I have to buy some stuff, I have to go to the dentist, whatever. Hand me $5,000 so I have you know, close to seven or something after I get my next check in a couple of weeks or whatever. Yeah, a couple of weeks. No, not even more than a couple of weeks. But you know what I mean? And I'll be out of here. But don't give me your, oh, it's only fair. Like, I want to live here forever under these circumstances. It's ridiculous. Because she could turn around just like she justified the 53000 she put in her own pocket. Well, no one cared if I lost my thousand, and I, I, you know, your mom wouldn't have had it. If, I know, and I never condemned you for it. All these years later, people were pointing stuff out to me, but I never condemned you for it. My mom didn't want to go after your half. She wanted to, to get rid of, to dissolve the power of attorney, have you not be in power over her, and have access to her money that you were holding on to, like, whatever, and you wouldn't let her, you, you, you know? She's like, she would tell me, she could spend money on her kids, I'm not allowed to spend a penny on you. But then auntie's whole thing can always be regarding the hurt. My mom's half of the money is that she's protecting my mom from me spending the money. So, you know, she always has an answer. But that didn't matter. They'd say she shouldn't have taken that much money. She shouldn't have accepted it. It doesn't even matter. And the thing is, it was not a negotiable. But I never condemned her for that. She condemns me for existing, for not being perfect, for Omar not being trained. I mean... Like, I was never in an abusive relationship. Like I said, like I was just, just lazy or just whatever, you know? No compassion, empathy, but oodles of compassion, empathy for her own kids or their extended families or this, that, or whatever. Of course, there's none for me. None for me, people. And the fact is, we were all grateful that my mom did not wind up a ward of the state. Auntie was grateful that she didn't wind up a ward of the state because Auntie doesn't want them going after her 53000 okay? Auntie did not have to relinquish all control. No one was going to force her, you understand? We were just all grateful. Nobody said that Auntie, if she was so worried about me spending, but she didn't care. You have to understand, she didn't care. She joked about it. You know, you, whatever. If you got to spend all the money, if you spend it all on her, then oh well. You know, I'm not worried about it anymore. It's out of my hands. You take care of it. That's what she said when she turned over all that money. She didn't care. 
She didn't care what happened. She was grateful. We, we went through the seven months of hell. She didn't care. You understand? You get it? You get it, people? She did not care. She was really so concerned. She, she, she could have just kept the money and kept paying the bills and etc. She could have kept herself in that role. But not as a power of attorney. You get it? Just as doing it. But she couldn't hand it over fast enough and put all the responsibility on me. She knew I wasn't good with money. She didn't care about any of it. She didn't care at all. She relinquished everything. She didn't want anything to do with anything. Just, she's going to be the sister and that's it. Until the unthinkable happened. And my mom turned on me. Okay? I just didn't care. I'm not saying she didn't still love my mom or want, you know, but she didn't care about any of that responsibility anymore. And nobody was going to force her to whatever, you know. It's up to you now, Laura. You take care of your mom. And then we got, remember, when I was, when I was having a hard time, don't leave. Elder Service will step in. You're a godsend to your mother and to me. You don't cause your mom's breakdowns any more than I ever did, Laura. Now you know how I feel, okay? I have those texts. She cannot deny she said them. Said those words. And more. More words. Later. When we're friends anymore and she, you know, she just doesn't even want to be health care proxy anymore, okay? Now, Grant, my mom didn't want her to be health care proxy anyway, but my mom was torn. She went upset her sister, okay? Auntie knows my mom's pattern. Auntie's not the only one who knows my mom's pattern is to go back and forth. Look at all the things I could tell a lawyer about how my mom viciously turned against her sister, okay? It's my mom's pattern. I want you guys to never forget. It was just fucking chance. It's not like Auntie doesn't usually rent out, rent out that downstairs apartment. You get it? Because she could say, like he said, well, what is she, why is she so worried about rent? You know? She wants to make her sister well again. Why is she worried, so worried about getting rent? Or your mom paying, having to pay over there and over here and whatnot. Why doesn't she just, you know? And she could say, well, I, 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 I need it or I should get rent for that apartment. I could rent it out to someone else. Uh-huh. And Joe views that as racketeering. You've got guardianship and servership over her, and you're, you're renting out your downstairs apartment to her, you know? That doesn't mean Joe's right. I'm just saying it was, oh, I'm not saying Joe's right about that or right about the kidnapping. I'm saying that it's only chance that her down, auntie's downstairs apartment was vacant. You understand? It's only chance. Her little make my sister well again would have been a non-issue had the apartment not been vacant at the time. And then it becomes, if Elder Service was even involved, if the hospital was whatever, I think it was all a conspiracy against me, honestly, including the revoke and the release. It's probably Auntie's idea. Okay? But regardless, whether or not it was, like Joe says, my mom is sectioned against her will, locked up in a mental hospital. Anything she's saying is hearsay. Okay? It's hearsay. You can't, it, that's ridiculous. You know? Or at least it should be, but we've already established this hospital's bullshit, had numerous violations against it, wouldn't let me on my mom's behalf because I know what's best and I don't want to deal with these same people who put me through hell by discharging my mom too soon and leaving me to deal with it, wouldn't even let me request ahead of time, before my mom was even there, to let my mom have a different doctor and different social worker, okay? So this hospital's bullshit, numerous violations against it, and anything my mom would say to them when she's locked up and sectioned against her will is hearsay, okay? But of course, if Auntie's going to go in instead of being on my side and validate it, then we're done. But Auntie would have never done that. She would have never done that had her, she couldn't open up her downstairs apartment to her sister because the apartment happened to be vacant at the time, okay? You get it? 
I hope you do get it, at least some of you. I, don't, I would fucking die if I didn't have this YouTube. Seriously, I'd fucking die.